Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Ridden and today we have the new release of the Surprise Cakes app. I'll show you first how to make this cake and then, so exciting, drum roll for those of you unfamiliar with my app, once you've made your cake or your cupcake, you print out the marker and place it on top, open up the app, choose the one you're using and voila, a 3D pirate ship appears on the top of your cake. How easy was that? So much quicker than making it all out of fondant. And because it's 3D, you can look all around it, you can fire the cannons, you can make the sails go up and down, and you can even see down into the water and see sharks and things going past. Oh my goodness, this is one of those apps you really have to try it to see what it's really like. Because it's 3D, it's a bit hard to show in a video. This is the fourth release of the Surprise Cakes app and it already lets you put fireworks on your cake or dragons inside a castle or unicorns on top. And if you already have the app, thank you so much for your support and getting in early on. This is a free update for you. Just click on update and head over to howtocookthat.net to print out the marker for the pirate ship. If you don't have the Surprise Cakes app yet, then you can go get it. What are you waiting for? It's on the iTunes App Store or Google Play. Now, how to make the cake. You'll need two quantities of buttercream and three round sponge cakes. And I'll link you to my recipes and videos for those on this week's howtocookthat.net blog post. And between the layers of this one, I'm putting some apple sauce and some crepe dentel for a bit of crunch. To keep it crunchy, we're gonna to need to mix it in with one cup of the buttercream. Now the filling's gonna give it a bit like an apple crumble type of a flavor. You can use just plain buttercream or whatever flavored filling the person you're making the cake for likes. Split your cakes in two, add that apple sauce, followed by the buttercream crunchy filling. Place that onto your plate or cake stand and then stack them up. Place the rest of your buttercream into a piping bag fitted with a large nozzle and pipe it around the cake. If you don't have a piping bag or you don't have a large nozzle, that's fine. You can just spread that buttercream around the cake. This just makes it a lot quicker doing it this way. Take a spatula and smooth out the top and then smooth the sides of your cake as well. And then use the spatula to clean off any buttercream that's on the cake platter. Roll out some light blue fondant and place it over the top of the cake and smooth it down the sides. Then roll out some more and cut a straight edge. Then use your knife to cut a wavy edge, like some waves going up and down. And then roll out a long snake of white and add it along the top to make our wave. Using your fingers, put a small amount of water around the top of the cake. And this will help the fondant to stick, but if you use too much, it's just going to slide off. So just a little bit, just dampen it. Wrap that strip of fondant around the cake and then repeat that with another strip of pale blue. The other way you can do the same thing is to add the strip of wavy colour first. Then once it's in place, add a tiny bit of water using your finger around that wave and then add the snake of white on top of that. Either way is fine, just continue to add more layers, changing the colour of them to a deeper blue as you go until you get all the way down to the bottom of your cake. To make some gold coins for our treasure chest, roll out some dark coloured fondant, then use a straw to cut out little circles. Then using a dry paintbrush, just dust them with some gold luster dust. Roll a cylinder of brown fondant in about the size you want your treasure chest to be, then cut off a slice for the lid of the treasure chest. Shape the leftover piece into a rectangle box, the same width as your lid. And then using your knife, just make indents for the planks of wood that have made up the treasure chest. And then run the tip of your knife down gently to make it look like it's got a wood grain. Do the same on the top of the chest as well, giving it the wood grain there. And then for the inside, we want to make it look like it's actually a deep treasure chest. So just make a line along each edge and take out a little of the fondant so that it has a little dip down there. Now take your straw and make indents all over the inside like it's full of coins and then just dust that with gold luster dust just on the area where the coins are. Then add some of those loose ones on top and it looks like treasure. Take some paler brown, roll it out thinly and cut a strip and add those strips up the sides of the front of the treasure chest and across the top over the lid there. 
For the lock, roll a tiny ball of fondant and make an indent in the middle of it and then brush it with gold. Don't you love it how when you brush something with gold it goes from looking ordinary to looking really good? Add that to the front of your chest and then for the lock bit on the top of the chest just roll out another ball, flatten it out with your finger and then use a straw to cut out a circle out of the centre. So this leaves you with like a really skinny donut. Squash it in a bit to make it like an oval and then add a little snake across the top and trim each side and then just brush that with gold and add it onto the lid. Now for our island, take some sand coloured fondant and roughly roll it making it skinnier at the edges just using your rolling pin and pushing down there and then use your knuckles to roughen up the surface. Take some blue and white fondant and put them together and swirl them together. Now you can just twist it, fold it, twist it, fold it and roll it between your hands. Now the more you mix it the less noticeable the swirls will be so it's up to you how much you want to mix it. Roll it out and then add a snake of white on one edge and continue to roll them together. Then place that around the edge of your island, folding back the top white edge there just so it's like waves splashing onto the beach of the island. Neaten up the outside edge and then add that to the top of your cake. Again just lifting up the outside edge so it looks like it's waves coming up. Make an indent in the top of the sand, I'm just using a back of a knife to do that and add your treasure chest with a few coins around it. Making that indent just makes it look like the chest is heavy so it's sinking into the sand there. Add the marker and make sure you position this in the middle of your cake so that your ship sits in the right place. And just so you know, if you scale the map marker here bigger or smaller, then your ship will be bigger or smaller, which is good if you're doing a larger cake. Or if you want to print out a massive one for the floor, then you'll have a huge pirate ship too. And your cake is done, ready to surprise your guests at the party. Now just a word of warning, make sure you let them use the surprise cakes app before you actually want to cut the cake because all the kids will want to have a turn playing with it and looking around the ship. So if you're ready to eat, you're going to be delayed there. So just bring it out early. Share this video with someone you know who needs a quick solution to an amazing cake. You don't even have to bake, you can just buy a store-bought cake and put the marker on top. Surprise Cakes app is available for iTunes and Google Play. Subscribe to How To Get That for more cakes, chocolates and desserts. Click here to go to my website and get the recipes and here for my YouTube channel to see all my other videos. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you all on Friday.